Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya, weird news, hot gossip, and scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy, happy campers. campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Booch. Wow, look at that surge of energy. Well, we got off a call with our podcast network today um, when we were recording this, and this is going to be in the flow of um, our podcast getting promo on different shows. So I'm wondering if that was a brand new listener from a different podcast that just heard me do that little like, huh? And they're like, actually, this is not the show for me. I was going to say, <laughs> are you still here as the listener in the room with us? If you stayed through that and thought that was maybe, I don't know, appealing or curious, I think you're like the show. If that was off-putting to you, wait till you hear what's coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Welcome back, campers. Yes, it is week 76. Holy sticks. Holy shit. 76 weeks here at camp. How's everybody doing out there? You're sounding crispy. I'm sounding raspy. I just kind of think a raspy, crispy voice on the mic. Yeah. It's got a sort of genuine je ne sais quoi. Um, okay, so you... Just did something pretty exciting, and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. My I just watered thinking about it. No, I am really proud of you. You've been uh, you've been hustling. You've been putting the hours in 24 consecutive, to be correct. Maybe not consecutive, because consecutive would be like back to back to back. All this to say is you put in the work for stuff, and I'm very proud of you for your accomplishment, oh. which is... I... <laughs> Um, I graduated uh, Improv 101 at UCB Theater in New York Yay. City. Yay! He was an honor roll student too, bitches. Actually, our professor was supposed to give us a professor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> Edit was, that out. He was a great guy. I don't know if he was a professor. Um, my teacher is supposed to go into our Google Classroom and give us our final, like not grades. I think if you just complete the program, you graduate and can move up to like 201. Um, but he's going to leave us a little note of his overall kind of thoughts on us and like i think he said he was gonna like be like oh look this is why i th think you did great this is why i think you could work on if you continue to move forward with improv right i'm looking forward to that but yes i did graduate um improv 101 so a big part of my um dream of moving to new york was to take some sort of more formal acting comedy training i think i've done quite well on my own and yeah, my own you know. test but i've never really like gone to a class for acting i barely did theater i did theater in middle school i didn't do theater at all in high school everything i do is just really from the noggin so um i don't know after christmas i kept like telling myself i was like that was the reason you came here zach was to do stuff like that too so um i've heard about ucb which it's it stands for upright citizens brigade mm -hmm. that's the, the the comedy kind of group i went through and i've heard a lot about them yeah. they are like a reputable group in new york city but um, I went on their website and they have a ton of classes. They have them in LA, in New York, and they have them online as well. And I was like, oh, like I, I could take a stand-up class. I could take uh, a character class, a sketch writing class. But then I saw improv. And improv has always been the form of comedy that scared me the most. Why is that? Because improv is so not planned. <laughs> improv. Everything in an improv set or a, like a, like a performance is all um, off of a suggestion from the audience and then created on the spot with your scene partner. And then you're kind of bouncing off and yes anding to everything they say to create this comedy sketch. So it's why I've always been really afraid of it because everything I do online is very thought out as much as it seems stupid there is like thought behind it so i was like sitting in bed one night and i found this class and i was like oh they have one called improv 101 intensive so intensive means that it was four days a week three hours a day for two weeks and then a class show so um three hours on tuesday three hours wednesday thursday friday again the next week and then the class show or the other option was I could go once a week for two months. I feel like that's easy to fall out of the mojo of it. 
I feel like you and I are the same in that where it's like we would do a lot better if we just had the intensive courses. Yeah. And I just think like if you're learning back to back like that, and that was why I chose the intensive was because I felt like, okay, this is really throwing myself into it. I don't have time to kind of like fall out of it throughout the week and then try to be like, what what we're talking about. And I was like, you know what? Like this is, it was 11 to two which is a very specific time of day. And I was like, who's really going to be in this class? So when I like first signed up for it or I was looking at it, it said that there was three spots open. And I was like so nervous. It was like, I think $450, maybe five. I'm not sure. Full transparency is what it cost. Um, But that's a write-off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But the next morning I went to look at it again. I was like, well, let me see it again. Two spots left. Yeah. And I think that is what you needed. I did. I needed to know that it was it was being taken away from me. Because mm -hmm. you've been tickling with the idea. You've been teasing it, tickling, milking the idea for quite some time now. And the reason I've always not done it has because, oh, this is coming up. Or I don't have time. But I was like, this block of time in the beginning of February, I can do this. Yeah. So once I saw one spot go away, I signed up. Would you believe when I went first day, which was absolutely so nerve-wracking, I was so so nervous i know i was like have a good day at school make a friend i know and i went in there and i was like the, we all sit in our seats and we're all kind of like first day jitters um there were 16 of us in our class maybe 15 15 that's a good class it's it's not too big not too small it's more than a bite size it's like a snack size totally agree like that's a good for an improv class you yeah. want to have like multiple people to work off of you're not always with the same people it was great um and i am so so proud of myself that i pushed myself out of my comfort zone was i the best in class no was i the worst in class up to you. I think I went in with really the intent to be like, I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn how to work with people. And I'm going to learn how to like not beat myself up when things don't go my way. Because that's my biggest issue in life. Yes. Coming from the horse's mouth. It, you you do your heart on yourself when things don't go exactly the way you expect them to go, which is like perfectly, which isn't how life works sometimes. But that's what I wanted to tell you. I feel like there's no way that I can tell you how the things were going to go because um, I experienced it as a professional improver myself. <laughs> oh. Improv is life after all. Um, <clears throat> that... You know, you don't have to be like the funniest person in the class, like every single class. And this is why I'm so proud of you afterwards, because that's what you were telling me you were gathering from it was that you were just working on yourself and working with other people and just kind of, you know, trying to be a cog in a machine to get, yes. you know, the skit done. Yeah. And it's like the the best way to be an improviser is to like treat the person you're on stage with as the funniest person and you're trying to like constantly set them up for success and in turn they do it to you so you're really going back and forth it was such a challenging thing to like learn how to do if you've never done improv before guys it's like basically imagine like us standing up here and we're like okay can you give us a one word suggestion and then someone in the audience shouts seashell and then the seven people up there in groups of two, maybe more, whatever, they take turns on the spot coming up with entire skits. Like right after that. Like right you after. say, seashell, the, the lights fade, the lights come on, and it's like, okay. And there's Sally selling seashells by a seashore, which, in my opinion, is a bad place for business because people can pick them up off the ground for free. Oh, my God. That is not where my mind went, but that would have been such a, a, such a funny sketch if you were Sally and then I moved in and I was like, Pally. <laughs> and I was also selling seashells and then we were competitors and it's like, there's only run room for one bitch out on this seashore. That would have been a funny sketch. There you go. And we would have done it right on the spot just like that. And you really just have to like, when they say something, it's all about agreeing and moving forward. I'm not going to give you like, I'm not going to teach you improv on this podcast. But I think the big takeaway for me was, um, and how to make it more like, I don't know, universal is like really push yourself to do that thing that makes you uncomfortable. And even if you're not great at it, I do believe the... I don't know how I feel that I did it is better than any other feeling I've had from like a sketch I did. Like it didn't matter how funny I was on stage or in class. Like I had great moments. I had some weird moments, um, but I just am so <laughs> proud that I did it. Cause yeah. I like constantly talk myself out of things. And 
So what do you think is the biggest difference in yourself? Oh my God, listen to me. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you're really interviewing and I love this. What do you think is the biggest difference in yourself between the first day and when you did your showcase, which I did attend? You, Gummy bears in hand. You came to my big show. Yeah, I was so <laughs> of course I wouldn't miss it for the world. I was so nervous, but um, I had my crew. I had my class and I loved my class. Yeah. I think my biggest difference I see myself is to not – look back at what I did and 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 look at it as if it defines what I'm going to do next. Wow, that's impactful. I think the first sketch that I did on um, the showcase that I was in, I thought that I could have um, contributed more. But I when, once it was done, I stepped back to the line, I let it go. Yeah. And then my next one where I kind of more initiated, I thought there were some really strong moments in there, but I wasn't even thinking about what happened previously. And when it was all done... I didn't go back and and then punch myself for what I could have done better. I like left it there because I know it's not my last time and I just want to keep doing it and keep like working at just being more comfortable in the moment, you yeah. know? And that's so applicable to life, damn it. I've never been that person in life that's like, I don't know, like whatever, man. It's I'm always like kicking myself and thinking I could have done better. And it's not, that's not over with me. I'm not like a healed person from Improv 101 at UCB. Even though <laughs> they'd love that probably. Um, but no, I just, I think it's a step in the right direction. And I think, you know, it's cool. I think like, so like I work in comedy and this is like me kind of rehoning my skills and like, and fine tuning it. But I think people who like work in hair and they go to like a, some sort of conference or like whatever, I think like professional development and whatever you do is super great. But if you don't do improv or comedy and you want like an outlet to meet people, not me becoming really good friends with my whole class. We were so like close and tight in it. And like the the cast rap party at the bar. Uh -huh. Like Jonathan, I was like, Jonathan, can you like kind of go alone? Not because I didn't want you to go, but I just like wanted to have like a moment with my class. And, I like, take no offense to that. I wouldn't, I don't want to like go and be like that extra person who's just like lingering and and everybody has their inside jokes. And I'm just like, yeah. how about that zip zap zap class number one, bitch? I know. It was like just like fun to like really celebrate with the crew that we like worked so hard on. And just, um, I don't know, it was cool. And the the people I met in that class, I won't like call them out by name because that's just rude and I don't have their clearance to do that. But I just think they're all so talented and there are so many funny, brilliant people that I met in that class I never would have met that I like go to bed at night and I think about like some of the choices they would make in class and how just hysterical the world is. And it was just great to be in a room of people who were fearless and funny and wanting to like work as a team. It was so cool. Um, I love it. I don't know if I'll do 201 though. I don't no. know. If, I don't know if improv is for me. It's a really special form of comedy. I'm much more of a storyteller um, a, a character person. Right. You were pushing yourself to do it to, to help like interact with people and just like improv and, and just try something new. Well, even on this show, there's so many times that you say things that are so quick and that is improv. And I think I'm, I don't know. I've told you the synapses in my brain, it, it's melting away and I'm just trying to make myself a little bit smarter. So I hope it helped in that. I'm really anxious to see what my report card says. Yeah, your report card. <laughs> yeah, Achilles was my teacher. He was really great. Achilles, I'm giving you a plug. Oh my God, great skin so too. Plug me back in as a good, just tell me something nice. Please don't be mean. Please, I can't handle it. <laughs> well, you're probably, by the time this comes out, oh, I'll we have are. It 100%. Yeah, you've probably already had it. Maybe it's already there. I haven't looked. It should be. It's well, you should check. Yeah. Well, it, it, maybe it is. Maybe it's been there for a couple of days collecting dust and cobwebs. Oh, now I'm not. I won't look until the episode's over. Okay. Improv has been such a cool experience and I'm just happy I finished it. Yeah. I, I'm so proud of you. Thank and now you. I'm like, wait, I, do I need to go back to improv? But I don't know. Maybe. But here's the thing. You want to do stand up and you're really good at that. I don't foresee myself doing that but improv isn't stand-up it's so different right i know and that's why i think like i would go there and maybe like i don't know maybe i would have fun i don't know i want you to do it so bad because i was going there to stretch myself and to push myself i feel like you doing that is like it's like a buffet of jokes you were born born to do improv and even like being in that class and understanding how it all works i could only think about you most of the classes being like Jonathan would be so good at this. And not even like being good at this. I just think you would enjoy it. Yeah, I did it for a couple of years. But then again, I was like in adolescence. So much has changed. But I did do it for like 
five years, maybe six years. Yeah. You know what's cool about it, like, that I think you'd love to? What? Is, like, like, like I said before, like, everybody there wants to do it. Yeah. So there's no, like, there is no, like, oh, I feel dumb. Yeah. Because everybody's doing something dumb and everybody's trying to commit to the process of it. So you never, I never, like, even, I would only feel like, ugh, when I didn't think I, like, was fast enough or I wasn't, like, keeping the scene moving. But I did feel like, if I was being like a creepy old man in, the, in a little bit, like everyone was like, go for it. Like, yeah, everybody's just like, literally, you told me we're a cloud in a scene. I was like, okay. Oh my God, that was a fun scene. We were playing two clouds and we were pissed off because lightning and sun was getting all the attention. And when was, when was it going to be our turn? And that's another good part about the class is that it's sparking crazy ideas. At least for me, that's what oh, I would take. Is yes. like, I would have never thought to, to, write something along those lines and everybody just everybody's weird brain and weird actions just kind of paint this fun story and the thing that makes a good improv group is not letting each other fail that's the I, whole point of improv exactly and there are some bad seeds out there that really just want to outshine others and and i think that's when it gets annoying and it's noticeable by the audience yeah a hundred percent i'm not saying that about your class i'm not i'm just saying like in general no i know what you mean but i'm saying you know what that's what i i fear what would happen in the later classes if you do the 201 the 301 i think it gets a little bit more competitive, competitive. and a little bit more of like a, i want to really show what i can do whereas the 101 it's much like hey it's all new however a lot of my class had a lot of improv experience not shading anything about that but i did think i was like oh but then i have a lot of comedy experience yeah. so like who am i to judge but i was like wait a minute this is really a 101 but um thank god because the people who had experience we were, were incredible and i think about their their jokes and their choices all the time yeah i think it was awesome so would you go to an open mic like gag because they do have them around my class wants to go to the pit on friday night at the 10 o'clock show we are literally flying out the next morning so if i'm feeling creepy and freaky like my friend danielle she's like been asking me to go and i honestly really just want to go to maintain the friendships with the people i made because i really did enjoy seeing them for like 24 hours in two weeks like i loved the whole group so if i can really muster up the energy i will go i do want to do it so We'll see where my improv goes from here. Okay. I want to challenge you to consider doing something like that. I think it would um, tap into a new form of creativity and just naturally you'd be great at it. Yeah. And I think you guys should too, campers. There's improv in every city. Well, wait. What a fun way to meet people. Hey, there's another way to make friends. And you don't have to be in that that arena or want to really do improv because people do it for work. I don't, I was going to say, I think the reason why everyone was kind of like, um, performance based in my class was because it was midday. Yeah. Like they were either actors or like people who were working like night jobs so they could audition during the day. M- a lot of actors in my class. A lot of performers. Who was the um the salesperson who was like trying to how do I get what was it? Someone did a class with the salesperson. Was it Achilles? Yeah, my who teacher. Did yeah, wait, wait, to talk about that because that was funny. Oh, I asked my teacher if he ever does like corporate sales, because like salesmen do have improv people come in to help like sales teams. I think I think that's smart though. Think about it in it sales. Is. You you want to like resonate with the customer and really just like vibe on a person to person level to begin with. Yeah, he did a job with a big I won't say the company or whatever, but like he did this like big corporate job and they had the entire like um improv team go and like do an entire set and then break them off into small groups. And he's like, the only difference between what we're doing here and there was that they were all in Oxford shirts and it was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> but he, one of the salespeople asked him, he was like, oh, how do I get improv to get people to do what I want them to do? And Achilles was like, "Um, that's manipulation. Yeah, but. maybe that's not the move. He's like, that's not improv, but okay. <laughs> you climb that, that ladder. <laughs> it was cool. It was fun. It was really cool. Bitch, you know me. I did some research about the health benefits of improv. Do you care to hear? Oh, my God. Like medical? Well, like, yeah. <laughs> medi- <laughs> slap on that PhD, that MD, that Mayo Clinic ass. Imagine like, like going to the emergency room and they're like, help, I have heart palpitations. They're like, what does that make you think of? And you're, like, <laughs> you're like, heart palpitations, palp, pulp. Orange juice. Okay, orange juice. Let's do it Sunday morning. <laughs> and then <laughs> burst into scene. What are the health benefits? Okay, so this is coming from Psychology Today. It's an article by Clay Drinko. Whatever happened to psychology yesterday? Girl. That was stupid. See, that wasn't funny. No and. No and. <laughs> no but. The, the article is seven researched back benefits 
of improv comedy. Now, I'm not going to bore you with like all the details, but I was like, hmm, you've piqued my interest. So they ran these tests in this fMRI and EEG. Do not ask me what those are. I'll show you the door and it'll hit you on the way out. Campers, he'll show you the door. He's not even joking right now. So don't even ask. Not joking. Okay, so basically, oh, wait, it says in the next sentence. <laughs> they, they could see in these studies how improv alters the brain and the impact on creativity, stress, confidence, anxiety, uncertainty, intolerance, and psychological well-being. So there's this series of studies that were done, and they put jazz improvisers, freestyle rappers, and improv comedians into these MRI machines, and they hooked them up to um, the MRIs, which measure the blood flow in the brain, to give a better picture of like what areas you've all, you, like you know what I'm talking about. I get it. Yeah. It shows like what brain part is having a synapsis. But can you imagine like a jazz improviser? Like you just go into the hospital one day. You're having your surgery, it's the big day, and they're running a study next door, and somebody just has a saxophone inside the MRI machine, and it's just like full-on Kenny G. You think he's like lying on his back in that big circle thing, and it's like... A hundred percent. And then that poses the question, what are the freestyle rappers doing? Well, I can tell you who it was. Who? It was Lil Mama. Probably. She's like, my lip gloss is popping. My lip gloss is Wait, cool. I never considered like a freestyle rapper to be improv. That's oh my God. So it's, improv. Uh, it's improv. Impressive. Impressive <laughs> improv. I would try to make that work and it didn't. Okay. We're yes anding the situation. Yes and. Um. So with this test, with the rappers and the, and the jazz artists, they found that a brain region associated with self-judgment quieted down as the creative language brain center speaks up. So true. So true. They're like, babe, get out of your way. Just have fun with it. Get freaky. Literally. See, you should be writing these articles because sometimes they say things I have to process it and then you reiterate it. I'm like, that's what it was. Calm down. Get freaky. Yeah. It, that's <laughs> Pretty much what um what Clay Drinko PhD was going for here. Wait, every doctor should start prescribing every patient that. What? Like, oh, what's my prescription for like my anxiety? Calm down, get freaky. Yeah, have you tried not? Have you tried calming down and getting freaky today, <laughs> campers? I say calm down, get freaky. Get freaky. I would love to bore you with the rest of the details, but to be honest, I just had like an entire coughing fit. Yeah, we've been sitting here for 15 minutes and you've been coughing, burping, eyes Hiccuping, watering. farting. <laughs> the air coming out of you is unbelievable right now. Well, believe it. We, we love, love improv. improv. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements, Campers. This is the part of the show where we share articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like wildfire. Hopefully, no one's heard these because we are pre-recording. So, Jonathan, would you like to go first? I would love to. So, we're going to take it back to your birthday, February 3rd. Oh, real back. Beginning and, of the month. And we're in the UK, babe. UK. So, Jen and Tom of Birmingham... Get married in Bridge North Shorp Shrine. Why do they have crazy names like that for their towns? I don't know, Shorp Shrine? Shrop Shrine. Good for them. No, Shropshire. I don't know. Oh, I love a shire. So the ceremony is going on and it's lovely. The bride looks beautiful. The groom looks like he had a good time last night. Um, I'm sure there's tea somewhere. It's the UK after all. <laughs> I thought you meant drama. <laughs> That's all. That too, because... Oh, tea at high tea. Tea at high tea. The ring bearers both realize they have misplaced the rings. Were they boys? Well, there was the groom's guy and the bride's girl. Oh. The br bridesmaid, maid of honor. Well, the ring bearers are usually the little kids that go down the aisle. Right. But sometimes when you don't have a ring bearer, it's like the groomsman has it closest to his heart. Oh. They played a prank on Mark and they, they hid the rings. You have my to group tell of friends are fucked up. Is. I'm sorry, my cousin Mark, who has high anxiety, he needs to try improv. Let's figure that out. But they hid the my friends hid the ring from him when he was like the best man at um at John Anthony's oh, that's wedding. Not, that's so not he nice thought guys. that he had lost the ring, and I was like, "Stop it!" I was the mom. I was mom mode that whole time. Yeah, that's enough to give anybody a heart attack for sure. He literally put it down so he wouldn't lose it when he like went to the bathroom, came back, and the rings were gone. There, it was mean. It, that was mean. Okay. So the ring bearers realize they've misplaced the rings. And that's when the whole room goes like a little uneasy. And I hate watching wedding videos like that where everybody's just like, 
you can feel the emotion. I the- hate that too. So the groom's guy and the milkmaid run out the back. <laughs> and guess what walks in? A cow. Two fucking penguins walk down the aisle with the rings. It was like a whole skit. The bride and the groom were in on it. It was their idea to have a penguin and his penguin pal walk down the aisle with their rings because penguins mate for life. Oh, that's the reason that they chose penguins? Well, kind of. So Widget and Pringle waddled down the aisle while the groomsman Adam lured them with fresh fish. How cute is that? Wait, I'm literally cheering up because Widget for a penguin. I need whoever chose that name to really be proud of yourself. Widget, that, oh my God, and Pringle. You couldn't even write that. They wrote that. Oh my God, Widget and Pringle. Isn't it cute? I want them to come to camp. So the um the couple that was getting married, they're like completely obsessed with animals. They're animal lovers. They had a reindeer at the wedding reception. And Ooh. each table had, you know how they have like the table numbers? Well, each table had a number and a, a corresponding animal. Like they didn't have the actual animal there, but yeah. it... it it was like table one's a rooster. You know, they just like it was all animal view. Your mind goes right to <clears throat> cock every time. Every time. A hey, cocktail hour? You had me at cock. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, so I went to, I was stalking their Instagrams and they like don't really Wait, have followers. Person, so I'm like liking, people? yeah, I'm like liking, I'm like, oh shit, I need to stop double tapping. Do you ever do that when you're not paying attention and I'm just like double tap? No. They probably think I'm a fucking weirdo, but they, have been taking pictures with sloths, llamas, geese. They have tons of cats and dogs. They're animal people. They originally wanted a goose. But geese, apparently they're dicks. Yeah, and they're temperamental and they're not performers. Like, like you could not have been done better than Widget and Pringle. No, you couldn't have. But can you imagine going to this wedding? That whole ordeal happens. And then an unexpected goose starts snapping at you. Because they bite. They honk. They have teeth. I've been chased by a goose before. It's a goose chase. Literally, that's why they call it that. No, it was scary. No, it's really... If you've ever been chased by a bird, like a land bird, and a land bird's like one that like enjoys walking like chickens. An emu? I'm sorry. Oh, that's too much. That's See, that's... I would just curl down and die. Actually, I probably could take an emu. Mm-mm. Their beaks, are they are they beak powerful? The, they are beak powered. Oh, they're beak motivated. I was like, so where are these guys coming from? Because yeah. I was like, is this going to be like a PETA situation? Are these penguins handsomely paid? Are they okay? They better be. They come from a bougie zoo animal sanctuary. You can only visit the zoo by appointment. Appointment only. It's very expensive. And they specialize in animal training and education and animal welfare and conservation and... They specialize in hospice resident visits and animal assisted therapy. Oh, I love that. I love that. There were pictures of what, you know, on a normal day, wing, what is it, Widget? Widget and Pringle. <clears throat> widget and Pringle go and they visit old people who are literally on their deathbed and they just like, they just snuggle up with the old people and the old people are just smiling and it's just so sweet and it makes me really sad and upset. That's but so that's sad. that's their job. That's their duty. And they like to, you know, they're very well taken care of and they're used to, um, you know, dealing with people. Also, the videos of the people at the wedding, I was expecting to see, I don't know, at least like kids like standing up and like people like gawking and being crazy. Um, but everybody was like very normal and they were like, oh, my God, how sweet. And nobody was loud. Nobody made like anything crazy. It's like maybe it's just America. I don't know. Yeah, especially my redneck side of the family. They were like, what the hell? Yeah. A penguin? <laughs> yeah, everybody was just calm and they were like, oh, how sweet. Yeah. So like the penguins were in like a calm environment when well, this was Well, thank happening. God for Widget and Pringle because they're professionals. They could have handled it either way. But as someone who loves to go to appointment-only zoos, um, those animals are well-trained. Yeah. What is an appointment-only zoo? That's crazy. I think it's because it's more of like... um. Well, yeah, they do call special themselves engagements. Zoo. I think it's I think it's because they go like two places with their animals, you know. Yeah, they bring and it on the road. More of like a sanctuary, so it's probably not big. So like, hey, don't show up because we have we've only got like two penguins. Which hey, it's enough to make me show up. Maybe not for a five hundred dollar entry fee, but well, it is the UK. So whatever UK dollars are, what is a UK do- a euro? A pound. A pound. A pound. Hey, I'm down to lose five hundred pounds instantly. That's what Brexit was. What? Britain and, and, and I'm not doing that. Um, yeah, let's talk politics <laughs> after Pringle and Widget. Okay, so what's your story that you've got? I love you, Pringle. I love you, Widget. Um, my story is titled Mount Everest. 
Climbers will need to bring poo back to base camp by the BBC, keeping it in the UK for the Queen and the King. King Charles got diagnosed with cancer. I know. Is he still alive when this is when they're hearing? Don't this? do that. I don't know. It's just a question I ponder. By Naveen Sign Katka. Wait, I'm sorry. Read the title again. Mount Everest climbers will need to bring poo back to base camp. What accent was that? That was so weird. It sounds like a rescue mission for Winnie the Pooh. This article turned something on me. I be, I like I like poured a cup of black coffee. I rolled up my Oxford sleeves and I smoked a cigar and I wrote this whole piece. I just was in my research mode. I love that. Like my arm hair got dark and coarse and black and I started yelling for a secretary. I didn't have one. And your vision got really bad. So you put on these glasses, bifocals, Bi- if you will. They were bifocals. People climbing Mount Everest will now have to clean up their own poo and bring it back down to base camp to be disposed of, authorities have said. Our mountains have begun to stink. Migma Sherpa Chairman of Pasang Lemu Rural Municipality told the BBC. The municipality, which covers most of the Everest region, has introduced the new rule as a part of a wider measure being implemented. Due to extreme temperatures, excrement left on Everest does not fully degrade. Oh, because it's frozen rock solid. It's like, fro- it's, it isn't, it isn't. It's like a really crazy... You know what I mean? It's just, it's not doing nature's course because it's just so harsh up there. Yeah. It's not having the, there's no rain to wash it away. You know atmosphere, I mean? plenty of atmosphere. It's almost like space out there. It's so yeah. crazy. No, I'm sorry for the um, ignorant question. Where is Everest? Mount Everest bor- borders the countries of Nepal and China. Mm-hmm. Where are Nepal? Nepal, it's a kind of, I think we'll pull, we have a, oh, yeah. oh we have a globe. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Not you licking your finger like you're turning a page in a book. It's somewhere right here. Oh my God. That's pretty. That's one of my favorite places to oh, visit. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. Um. Oh, that's what the bumps are. Literally. Oh my God. Mount Everest. For the Braille. It's like I just climbed up. We're getting complaints that human stools are visible on rocks and some climbers are falling sick. This is unacceptable and erodes our image. Mr. Migma said. Yeah, we got to figure out what to do with all this poo. I've been saying it for years. Climbers attempting Mount Everest, the world's highest peak, in nearby Mount Lost, will be ordered to buy so-called poo bags at base camp, which will be checked upon their return. Um, So this is something that we're also going to implement here at Camp Shady Birch. We have a lot of campers doing some hiking trails, and I'm noticing that some of you are just letting it go out there. And none of our trails are far enough from the bathrooms for that to be happening. So I, I'm a little creeped out by some of you. As an IBS survivor, like, I don't even condone that. Like, Wait, somebody said that the ad that they heard on our, our show was, like, for IBS was the second episode. It oh, was I like love that. IBS, yeah. Podcast we was like, we yeah. know what dynamic ad to put in here. The IBS queens yeah. survive. We didn't pick that. It picked us. So rubbish really remains a huge issue on Everest and other mountains in the region. Although there has been an increasing number of cleanup campaigns, including an annual one led by the Nepal Army. Nepali Army. Can you imagine, like, that sucks. You have to climb halfway up or wherever this poo situation is. You have to climb, like, all the way that way and you're just doing a cleanup mission to clean up other people's shit and garbage. Yeah. Other people's. Well, I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but there's a lot of, like, there's there's a lot of reasons like they charge people to climb Mount Everest. The government does in order to then pay the workers to do that. So it's a job, you know what I mean? right? And that's understood. But um, and the people who like live in the mountains, like a lot of like the Sherpas who are like just like native to that area, they're not like they're used to high altitudes. Like this is like where they're from. Obviously, no one is born on the top of Mount Everest, but like it's kind of a part of the culture there. And so I, I don't think. I don't think they, I think no one wants the litter, but it, it is just a recognized job there to be the clean people. So waste remains a major issue, especially in the higher camps. Like um, there's like just different layers of Mount Everest. So these biodegradable bags. So basically they'll go up there, they'll reuse this bag multiple times. It'll kind of like freeze dry it and make it make it not smell. And you have to bring it back. Stinky. I think it's smart. So all of this had me asking a lot of questions about Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. What are I those just, questions? I like no. I don't know much about it. Do you? I don't even know where it was. <laughs> so no, we're on the same page. Mount Everest is twenty nine thousand twenty nine feet tall. That's a, is a that's a lot. It's over five miles. Wow. 
And, and you may think like, oh, it's five miles. No, it's like, it's obviously hard. You guys. You can't five miles up. Like I can walk five miles on the pavement. Can I walk five miles up? I don't think so. Um, who In 2023, an estimated 600 people summited the world's highest peak. So even more people did the hike but didn't make it to the top of the peak. Uh, but that 600 people, the 600 people who got to the top, that included 350 Sherpas, who are the people who come with you as like aides in Correct. the hike, and 250 clients. Oh. That's what they're kind of referred to as clients. Climber clients. Um, records were also set, um, including the two of these um, Sherpas who have now um, tied to climb the mountain um, 28 times. However, 13 climbers and Sherpas have been confirmed dead, with another four missing. <sighs> Which was a, a record-breaking year of deaths on Mount Everest since last year. Oh, my God. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 13 climbers and four people are missing. It's like, we don't know where they are, but we can only assume. Yeah. Um. I have no, I have no desire to do that. I, I don't can, either. I can admire uh, Me too. people who do. Me too. But it was like that movie, um, SwimGirl.com. Nyad. Yeah, Nyad. Where she, what did she swim from? Um, Cuba. Flo- Cuba to Florida. To Key West. I could never be me. I really appreciate athletic people. I think people who have a mission to climb Mount Everest, it's incredible. It is so expensive. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, I th- believe that some of the reasons why people died during this was a lack of training. Like it's a special kind of person. Not a- anybody who can just afford to climb it should climb it. Like you have to like know what you're doing. Even though they have guides with you, you still have to have some knowledge of climbing. Yeah. And at- that atmosphere. And as a camp theme podcast, we need to let our campers know I'm not sure if any of you are prepared for it. But if you are and you have, let us know. We'll give you the Everest badge. Yeah, they're um they're com- they're being 3D printed right now. Um I think it's interesting that you could only climb Mount Everest in these like two specific windows. Um it's like a 3 month journey in total to get there, go through the process, the paperwork, do the initial hike and then do the rest of it. It takes 19 days round trip trek to even get to the Everest base camp. And yeah, because don't you have to like stay at certain places to your body yes. has to adjust to the once at Everest base, base camp it takes an average of forty days to climb to the peak of Mount Everest. Holy shit! I, I think didn't think it took that long. Yes, and you can. It's like typically in like May, like a window in May, and then another window in September. They call it the seven windows. So how much does it cost? I know you've been asking me. No, you haven't. A thousand dollars a pop. It can really range. Anywhere between like twenty thousand dollars on a really low scale to like upwards of two hundred thousand dollars a person. Yes. Okay, but what is that covering? Is so, that covering like groceries, housing, eleven thousand dollars is just the the permit for the Nepalese government to do it. You have to pay if you're going to do this. You have to pay the Nepal government eleven thousand dollars without anything else included. That's just the permit to do it. And I think that's what covers the payment for the Sherpas to do the cleanups and stuff. Oh my god, they're like shitted on them. So if you let's say you're doing like a more high end one, right? You have these people called Sherpas that come with you, and there are people who are like they're they're from Nepal and they're kind of doing all the work for you. Obviously, you're hiking. I'm not saying you're not, but these high end trips, they're the ones like covering. They're like the ones like bringing up your supplies. Oh my god, you're paying one to be a cook for you, one to kind of help with the tents. So. Do they stop? Because I know towards the bottom they have like little houses, and I don't know if you know. There's the... yes, yeah. Okay, so there are like houses, not or... houses, but there's like tents, tents as you get higher. Oh, yeah, but there's like four levels to it. Oh, and I thought this was interesting. You spend around five thousand dollars on oxygen tanks. There are five hundred a tank, five hundred dollars a tank. You have ten, and six are for you, and four are for your sherpas. And if you're in a really ritzy trip, one sherpa's whole job is just to carry oxygen tanks. My God, I know. I could probably do it um, with one. Well, there's load Sherpas, there's climbing Sherpas, there's cook Sherpas. They're, just, they're doing everything. I I would be a cook. Really? Yeah, I, I'm not saying I'd be good at it, but it seems like the the least amount of walking with other people's stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like you're all, you're carrying up the corn. Yeah. And someone's like, oh, I don't I don't want corn. It's like, you don't have an option, babe. I brought what I brought. You're like, I brought- I'm like, fuck, I, I did leave the potatoes. <laughs> Shit, those I'll were so back. versatile, too. I can't believe. It. It's just, it seems like the ultra rich do this. Yeah. Or, you, or if you're just like a really passionate hiker, you are saving up significant amounts of money. We're doing fundraising. I guess, but like- 
yeah, you can do a walkathon for 4K. Can you can you really fundraise your personal trip? There's no research involved. You know what I mean? Like people people fundraise for yeah, like, like a sponsor. Like Niad, the, like swimmergirl.com. Yeah, that was a corporate sponsor. You're right. She yeah. got those. Um, but yeah, I just think like 20 is really the average is really forty four thousand dollars a person. Interesting. 44. That is nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like I couldn't. I don't know. I guess people just really get a rush from things that I can't relate to. I I I can imagine how insane that must feel to get to the top of Everest, though. That's like the that's the accomplishment of accomplishments in physicality for me, in my opinion. Like you climb Mount. Everyone knows in the world about Mount Everest. We don't know about her. She we don't really know speak where much. she is. She's really quiet. She really keeps it herself. She's covered in poo poo. And that's not her fault, and that's not okay. But I, I'm impressed by her. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. Speaking of Mount Everest, take a hike. <laughs> Hiking. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. So what am I telling to take a hike this week? What are you? What are you pissed about? <laughs> The color seafoam green. Ew, that's Bitch. crazy. <laughs> First, who named it? I have never seen seafoam that is green. Beige, maybe. Beige at best. Never green. I think we can come up with some better names to call it. Yeah, why is seafoam green turquoise? It's giving 2008 childhood bedroom. Yeah, oh my god, literally toothpaste. It's giving camisole. It's giving <laughs> spaghetti strap. <laughs> It's giving summer birthday. It's giving Chevron. It's giving almost Tiffany. Yeah, but no, it's not. Because Tiffany has a je ne sais quoi, an air to it. And like Seafoam Green is 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 the person who hangs out um, in the dish pit. And she's like, hey. <laughs> okay, so let's come up with some, um, some better things to call it. Because Seafoam is not green. Wilting butter lettuce. No, because that's too green. There's a blue hue to it. You're not. You're, you're it's not, like aqua. You're not honoring aqua in butter lettuce. There's nothing aqua about butter lettuce. However, I will say if you look up seafoam green, I'm getting way too many suggestions. I know in my head and I know in my heart and I know my truth what seafoam green is. And I don't have to have, I don't need Google. Who is Google? Stand up and show yourself. You just put a lot of information out there, but I don't even know who you are. So I don't need Google to tell me what seafoam green looks like. Okay, so my next thought is watermelon rind. You're well, maybe like watermelon rind from like three centimeters from skin. You're missing the blue. Where's the the blue with the green? It's I know it's... You're thinking too much. Of, we do need Google because we need to be... I'm thinking like a light mint green. A <laughs> little aqua. Yeah, it's a little aqua. You're not giving... There, what is there everything a little aqua but a watermelon? Gwyneth Paltrow's pseudoscience endorsed pelvic floor enhancing jade egg. See, yes. There we go. The jade has that little bit of. Like a light jade. Yeah. How about this? Somewhat sour <laughs> apple. Did you write down how about this? It no. Felt like you did. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it? Somewhat sour apple. Because mm. it's not sour apple, because that's green, green. Somewhat sour apple. You've lost me here. You've okay. lost me here. Well, maybe I'll get maybe I'll get you back with this last name suggestion. I believe we should rename Seafoam Green to Statue of Liberty's Bussy. Ooh, yeah, that kind of is Seafoam Green. From Sea to Shining Sea. You didn't have to put the bussy in there. That was that was some that was some licensing that you just you took. Liberty, I mean. You took some liberties. I took <laughs> Statue of Liberty. It writes itself. So I think that's kind of what we're going to go with is Statue of Liberty's Bussy. Somebody get um, Bear on the on the phone, on the horn. I was going to think, I was thinking like if it was like an OPI color, it'd be like Algae Bloom in Bali. I found an Essie color and it was called Turquoise and Caicos. That's cute. That's clever. That is what I wish I would have came up with was first. Was it Essie? It was Essie. Because Essie's like, okay, all the nail girlies are clever. OPI is the cleverest. They all copied OPI. Yeah. They're just, everybody's just doing drugs and naming nail colors. I would love to name a nail color. My favorite one. Marshmallow Dream. I'm not a waitress. And it's like the perfect red nail. Wow. I'm not a waitress. That's just like fine. 
I'm not a waitress. We would be so good at naming colors like that. In high school, that was my dream job. What a fun job. What would that be classified as, as in a career? It's definitely not someone's entire job. They have other things they have to do. Yeah, they probably work in a department. It's a part of a job. It's a team job. Yeah. Um, probably branding. A think tanker. Oh, that's, you have, OPI is a one big think tank. And they're all just breathing in the fumes. And we're going to fill that tank with seafoam. I love that. Okay, so what are you telling them to take a hike? Hold music. Hold music? Oh, yeah, on the call phone? Call waiting. Oh. I just got off the phone before we started recording today um, with National Grid. And I, I, I'm at a loss. Why am I underwater with this? <laughs> it is 2024. How has the technology not made this a little clearer? It just, it sounds like absolute shit. And if we just remove ourselves from the audio component, let's just talk about the choice here. It's it's sounding like Beethoven. It's giving chamber music, okay? Yeah. I can't even like differentiate between a horn and a string. It's just loud. It's so incredibly loud. I hate when it pauses and you think they picked up and then it just restarts. Oh no, yeah, that's just the loop. Yeah, no, and, and it's then, not seamless. Yep, yeah, and and of course it's like, our uh, you're, you're coming. Your call is coming up soon. It means a lot to us. Please keep holding for the next available representative. For the next available representative, and I'm not even mad at them. They're working, okay? Yeah, they're they're doing their they're thing. doing their thing. I'm at National Grid. I'm sure y'all got money, okay? So can we just get something else? Let's playing? get let's get the ring back tones. How about that? Let's get some Baja men. See that that now you're entering an issue with licensing. Bahamas deserve it. Can you move it like this? I can say. Imagine like a waiting. It's too much. They can't even. That's too layered. That's too important. A mood booster. Okay. Like you're waiting your cancer results. Can you move it like this? I can shake it like that. I was thinking more like jazz. Okay. Smooth jazz. Kenny G. Yeah. MRI. You you could just, you can never go wrong with it. Like I I feel like local on the eights did it best. Yeah. Like when I was eight years old, I was like breaking my back out to local on the eights. I feel like it's a crowd pleaser. It's gosh, break your back. Like breaking my back to it. Like uh, oh, like dancing. Like throwing it back. Okay. Yeah, I just think it's it's cross generational. Like I was a child enjoying that. Mm. I know Grandpa on the couch was watching that, and he loved it too. Yeah. You know, there's something calming about jazz. Now the original song. Do you know like the one classic song? And maybe this is what you're talking about, but it's like actually from the '80s, and it's like the stereotypical one song that was like. I guess companies didn't have to pay for. I don't know how it goes, but there's a whole documentary on it. It was like two college students in the 80s wrote this song and they like made billions off of it and they're still like making money off of it. Was it was there words in it? No. Oh, so me I don't know. It's it was just classic classic like orchestra music. I'm like orchestra at that quality. Beethoven would be rolling over in his grave if he knew what you were doing to his music. Okay? Was any doubt? How? Beethoven? He was deaf? I think. How could he be deaf if he's doing the music? And I think that's a question that many people have asked. Oh, so now we have to use Miss Google again. Big Google. Hang on. I'm going to look up. Was Be... How do you spell Beethoven? Beethoven. Oh, was Beethoven blind? Oh, deaf. (laughs) He was totally deaf. By the time he was 44 or 45, he was totally deaf. Oh, so he didn't wasn't born deaf, though. He just turned, he became deaf. Yeah. I, I wish totally, I wish Google said to you, he was totally deaf. <laughs> I wish Google talked like that. Okay, see, okay, now we have, we have questions here. He favored lower and middle range tones because he could feel them in his heart and his soul. Oh, that's sweet. And that's why he wrote the song Heart and Soul. That's really nice. I, I don't think he wrote, he wrote that. I don't, I don't think he did. He was inspiring yeah. to the piece. Um, yeah, no, I just, I felt like today I was listening to National Grid on hold and I was like, do I have a powdered wig on? Do I have a corset? Am I waiting for stew? Like, this is just ridiculous. It's like, we just need to modernize hold music. Take a hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle game Over. Welcome back. To Camper Crush of the Week, campers. This is part of the show where we share what we're loving, who's doing a great job, who's really just stepping up and taking ownership of their life. And like sometimes when you talk, you start to go like that. I play with my fingers. I know. I'm trying to focus. It's cute. I like it. Thanks. 
who's your crush of the week? You're my crush of the week. You're not, but in real life you are. Because today, guys, wait, it's Valentine's Day as we record this. And Zachary got me 32 roses, one for every tooth I have. I just, I know your teeth mean a lot to you. And you're always counting them every morning to make sure they're all still there. So I thought, one rose for every bicuspid. And no one's ever gotten me that many flowers. I've never exceeded the um, the 12 the baker's dozen. Oh, the daily limit? Yeah, I've never exceeded the daily limit of 13 roses. Well, I'm glad I could push the limit for you today. Yeah, you pushed the limit for sure. And I love you and you're my my camper crush forever. I love you too. However, my, my camper crush of the week this week is my hangover and migraine relief cooling cap, which came in real clutch this morning. Um, I suffer from from headaches from time to time and I am allergic to NSAIDs and bad vibes. So I can't take acetaminophen and I can't go to a low vibrational setting because it just like it just throws my my pH off. Yeah, you get you get really acidic. <laughs> um so yeah I can't take ibuprofen if I have a headache. You can't take I'm gonna reiterate this. You can't take Tylenol, you can't take Advil, Dayquil, Nyquil. Yeah you can't literally you can't even take Sudafed. I can't. I'm sort of fed up with this. But what I can do is put on my cooling cap. Oh, fuck. I should have brought it up. If you guys, I we did get targeted by, um, I almost had a hate crime. I don't know why I went there. By a TikTok shop <laughs> ad. And I wanted it for Christmas because I just wanted to like try it out. And I, I knew around the block there's a gift store that has like this compress that you put over your eyes. But it's like $60 for... Yeah, it's and it, a manu a factory manufactured, not homemade thing. But um, but the, how would you explain the texture? It's like it's like a mouse pad almost. Yeah, it's like a it's like a surround sound mouse pad. Surround sound, like a squinchy. Yeah, it's squishy. It's like a yeah, it's like a not memory foam. It's like it's a cooling gel. Yeah, and then so, we put it in the fridge. Yeah, if anyone's had a, a TikTok. In the past six months, I'm sure some of you, you've seen these. Like, they're pretty viral right now. Oh, I thought it was original. <laughs> no, they're, that's a whole... It's Yeah, a bunch of people have them. <laughs> All my friends sense. bought them, too. I love it. It works so well for me. The only thing is my head is so fucking big. I wish it would, like, press a little bit more right here on the bridge of my nose. Because when I do it, it pulls over your nose and it's, like, it's a cap, right? It's a cooling cap, of course. And I push it into... What would you call this? Like, my tear ducts. It feels so good. And that's like where the relief is. But because my head is so big, it just like doesn't, it doesn't really touch there. Yeah. I think it's just, I don't think it's made to to do that. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but I've been loving it and it helps me out a lot. I fell asleep wearing it the other night. I was like, are you, can you breathe? But obviously your mouth's out of it, but yeah, I would be so claustrophobic if that thing was on me while I was sleeping, but you would think that until you're wearing it. I think I'm just built different. So what are you crushing on this week? I'm crushing on a flavor of ice cream that I'm revisiting that I have not had in a long time that is quite famous, probably the most famous Ben and Jerry's flavor. Okay. Does anyone have any guesses out there? I do because I bought it. Okay. Rude. What was the flavor you bought? It wasn't fish food. It was Cherry Garcia, you guys. It's kind of like the talk of the town in Ben and Jerry's house. Like they, In my mind, they share a condo. And they'd just be making these things in the refrigerator, freezer, or whatever. No, but Cherry Garcia is like their probably their biggest flavor, right? Um, I yeah, probably it's, it's like their most famous. notable flavor. I think everyone knows Cherry Garcia. It's a clever pun. Yeah, of, of Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead. Um, but it's a cherry ice cream with cherries and fudge pieces. I haven't had it in years, and I don't know why I was being creepy. You called me from the store on Facetime and was like, "Which one do you want?" And I saw it and I was like, "Whatever." Like, I'm just going to go for it. Like, life is short. Yeah, you originally just wanted, like, chocolate, chocolate chip. And then you changed it up. I'm such a chocolate guy. That's why I was like, step out of your comfort zone. Get the cherry ice cream. And I'm just happy I did. And I haven't had it in so long. And I really, like, love Ben & Jerry's ice cream. It's like some people push themselves to climb Mount Everest. You push yourself to try a new ice cream. I did. I did this week. But I am missing my original favorite. Which is? Fish food. Fish. Hey, fish food's good. Fish food pH. Because that's a band. Yeah. And that's my favorite kind of pH. Oh, God. Why are we back on that? I don't know. I got the strawberry cheesecake flavor. I love that you love cheesecake. I don't want cheesecake in my ice cream. I don't even want cheesecake ever. It's just not my thing. I love it. They have such good ice cream. Go out and get some ice cream today, campers. Treat yourself. But if you're an IBS survivor like myself, stay local.
Take some lactate. What song's been sucking your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. What song is stuck in your head all week, Jonathan? Well, this song has literally been stuck in my head um, all of January and most of February. I definitely foresee it being uh, on my Spotify wrapped when they're like, you were obsessed with this song in January. It's probably going to be this song. And it is All We Ever Do Is Talk by Del Water Gap. I don't think I know that song. It's so good. I've been obsessed. He like dresses like such a cool like metrosexual guy that... No one says that anymore. Uh, what do you call it? Gender fluid? I don't know. He paints his nails black and he's intimidating. You love a male with a nail painted. I sure do. So his name is Samuel Holden Jaffe, but he goes by Del Water Gap. And anywhere online that you look him up, it says he was born either in 1992 or 1991. He's like, don't worry about it. Like, I don't see how that's any of your business. I love that that's so on like lock for him that people don't know. It's like, how does nobody know that? Right. So the Del Water Gap actually was his project with Maggie Rogers back when they were in college. Was he? He was in the same college as her? Yeah. He was in the same <gasps> class oh, with everybody with, else? Maybe. Wait, that class is crazy. That's the same. Maggie Maggie Rogers graduated with Fletcher and with... Um, uh, Phoebe Bridgers. Phoebe Bridgers. They're all in the same like program. Yeah. So I don't is know. He in it too? I don't know if they were in the same college, but they met at that time. Oh. And he was on the drums because they wouldn't let him sing, I guess. But he did come up with the name Del Water Gap, which is based off of the Delaware Water Gap because he saw it written shorthand in Sharpie on the box in a moving truck. And he's like, I like that name one day. I'm going to have a band and I'm going to call it that. I like that, and I like that you keep this song so personal to yourself. Because I've never heard you play it ever, so it's oh, like I, only in your only in your um, personal time. In January, when I would have my little coffee in the morning, I would have my my Kathy mug, and I was just like listening to to the song. Oh, when you're in your iPad era, my iPad era, yeah, yeah, you were like really into Neopets for a hot minute. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, do I have any other? Oh, okay. What really made him take off was in 2020, Margaret Qualey. She is just everywhere lately. What does she have to do with this? She covered his song with uh, with one of her friends during COVID. And um, people were like, hey, this song slaps. And um, and yeah, the rest is history. So yeah. Uh, oh, and he's our neighbor. He literally lives in our neighborhood. In our actual neighborhood or just yes. in New York? No, in our neighborhood. That's crazy. We have to find him. He's yeah. like, actually, do not. Don't do that Well, that's at all. cool. I feel like the campers probably don't know that song. And if that's like a really fun little hidden gem, and maybe some of our campers already love him. And I do think it's so interesting sometimes when you find an artist. And to me, it's like, oh, who is this person? Like, I've never heard of them before. Like, I had heard of him, but I didn't like listen. And then you go and it's like, oh, of course he has 5 million monthly listeners. I'm like, people know. I'm just like out of the loop. There's just so many musicians out there. It's it's fun. I love it. I don't know. I wanted to bring something fun and fresh that wasn't from the 90s or 2000s. So. I love that. Yeah, you're pushing yourself and you're showing your um, range. Thank you. This. I'm pushing and I keep pushing and I'm getting a hemorrhoid. I'm pushing so hard. Okay, push and pee. Keep it going. So what is your camp song? On theme with today's theme, my song is Yes And by Ariana Grande. Oh. I just picked it because of... The, the theme? Yeah, the theme. Not it's a good it's song. Good. It's like not like my favorite Ariana Grande song ever, but like I think it is really good and I think it's great for a playlist. As you hear, the campers obviously have heard, but the news just broke today that she's doing a, a remix with Mariah Carey. So should we just put, so like by the time this comes out, like obviously that'll already be out. Should we put the remix on the playlist instead? Well, we haven't heard it, so we don't know if it's good. I think we should commit. I want to commit. It's my song and I want it to be the Mariah Carey one. Okay. Because Mariah Carey is excited, and I love the two of them together. That's such a fun, like, I don't know. They could have been really competitive, but Mariah has been cool to Ariana. Has she? Because I thought that there was competitive. A little back in the day, but look at Nikki and, and Meg. Like, that's oh, just God. like, th there's room for everybody, guys. Seriously. But no, I'm super excited for her new album. I love Ariana Grande. Obviously, she's made some weird personal choices, but that's not my business. And that's what this whole song is about. Self-preservation and minding your own fucking business. And I really support that message. Um, but yeah, I think her new album's gonna be so, so cool. When did that come out? March? Eternal Sunshine? I think it's in, um, April, maybe. Maybe March. Uh, 
But um, the song is definitely like full Madonna vibes. But did you know that the video is um is uh, inspired by a Paula Abdul song, Cold Hearted? No, I didn't know that, but I could kind of see it. I, I did not. I was not. I'm familiar with the Paula Abdul song. I was not familiar with the video. I looked up today. It's almost like identical. It's pretty cool. I don't love the hat she wears. Paula Abdul is just so like cool. I love that everybody loves her. She's not really hated. Paula Abs cool. She, she, like you know, people in the industry, like everyone, like knows her. She's always like talked about as a very nice person. Well, what was the drama that happened with her and Bratz, the Bratz movie? You see that video clip where she was like bawling her eyes out. Maybe she did like choreography or something. Something happened with Paula Abdul and the Bratz movie. Oh, so they're beefing. I th- there was da- there was beef there. Okay, well let's not say it because allegedly there might be beef. Oh, there was we alleged beef. I'm sorry, allegedly. Well, we love Paula Jewel. We love Ariana Grande still, even though she's making creepy choices. Not my problem. Not my problem. Um, I'm excited for her new album. I'm so excited for Wicked. Oh my god, me too. Uh... Wicked and Moana 2 are coming out the same day. I'm definitely going to see Wicked. Can we get the midnight show? I don't know if I'm going to see Moana in... Theaters. Yeah, it's like not my... I don't know if I will. Yeah, I can but... wait till it comes out on video. And also, I do not want to go to Wicked midnight showing i don't know the show that well and i feel like that's going to be like reserved for the ultra wicked fans and i'll go i'll pay myself green yeah you will really i'll will. leave a track i'll be sitting in a giant bubble everyone's like you're literally in my seat i'm like <laughs> sorry <laughs> stop floating up there in the corner you're like floating over the projector it looked great the trailer the trailer looked great yeah so i'm excited for that um fun week here at camp we're gonna come back after this trip refreshed with such amazing stories. I can't wait. I can't wait either. If you haven't already, give us a five star and a review. We would greatly appreciate it. It means the world to us. Bring your friends to camp. Tell everyone about the show. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.